Wow, really nice. We're going to start with our national anthem, Canadian anthem. So for this, I will ask you to welcome Lauren Aronov. Lauren, please come to the stage. Thank you, Lauren. We are here today to mark a terrible anniversary. Six months ago, six months ago, on October 7, Hamas terrorists crossed from Gaza into Israel, brutally massacred, raped, tortured, and burned alive over 1,200 Israeli men, women, elderly people, children, and babies. They wounded thousands more, and they stole more than 240 innocent people into a hell in Gaza. Israel was plunged against its will into an existential war of survival that is still ongoing today. This war has been accompanied by a larger war, like we can see here today behind us. <laughs> An eruption of anti-Semitism unparalleled since the days of the Nazis. Aggressive anti-Semitic mobs have increasingly taken over the streets of the West, including right here in Toronto. Israel is in a war for survival. And increasingly, so are we, the Jews of the diaspora. These six months has been a roller coaster of challenges mixed with comfort and hope. We share the agony of families, 
that have been forever torn apart. And those who wait in excruciating pain for their loved ones to be returned from captivity in Hamas hell. So today, we gather here to demand Hamas, let my people go! Yeah. Let my people go! Yeah. One more thing, on the back, you have a word. From now until the end of the day, whenever one of us here on the podium mention the word Hamas, I want you to raise your hand and scream the word that you have on your banner, on your sign. So remember it, and I say Hamas, Hamas, let my people go. You have to turn the paper, right? Don't make the mistake. So, by the way, I forgot. My name is Avi. Thank you. And together with my son Dean, we try to organize this small rally. We had help from so many people, we'll talk about it in the end. But that's just a few words for now. So, Bracha Levinson lived in kibbutz near Oz. Like so many Israelis in the South, Bracha believed in the dream of peaceful coexistence with the Arabs on the other side of the fence. Like so many other Israelis, her dream was crushed for her and her family on October 7. Yoav Shimoni is here to tell us about his beloved grandmother, Boach. Thank you. So, um, sorry, can you guys all hear me? So I'm here to tell my story of what happened to my family on the 7th. I was here in Toronto getting ready for a flight. It was about midnight Toronto time. And as we normally do, um, whenever there is missiles or any conflict starts back home, I message my family, make sure everyone are safe, everyone are in the shelter. And after about 10, 15 minutes of deliberation with my family, when they're all assuring their safety, my sister um, raised in the family WhatsApp chat that my grandmother uploaded a video to Facebook. So obviously I immediately um, gone to her Facebook page and the worst thing I could have ever imagined was on it. It was a video of my grandmother laying on her living room floor in a pool of blood with about four Hamas terrorists standing up above her, yelling in Arabic as she's bleeding out. At that point, there was no communication of any Hamas infiltration into Israel, so we weren't even confident of what happened. We didn't, there was no assurance, no one knew anything. And that persisted for a few hours until we got actual confirmation that Hamas terrorists have broken into the kibbutz and have began and have done their attack. This, um, ever since then, so the kibbutz that my grandma was from is near Oz, where 25% of them had either been kidnapped or murdered. And a lot of them are still there now. Ever since then, not only these people are there, but because of how horribly all of the bodies of the people that were there were mutilated, burned. For me personally, for example, I didn't get to go to my grandma's shiva until a few months after the 7th because they took them that long to identify her body as it was burned to the ground along with her house. So, so I just want to make sure that everyone here know the, the degree of the destruction and the fact that it's 
affecting everyone, and not only that it's affecting everyone, it wasn't just something that happened on the 7th. As you all can see here, and the reason why you all are here today, it's because it's been six months, six months of our families in Gaza being tortured, not seeing daylight, being starved to death, and many more horrific things I can't even imagine. So I just want to thank you all so much. Thank you. I want to thank you so much for being here today. And yeah, let my people go. Let my people go? No. no! Let my people go? No! Oh. You know what? We just made a small mistake. One second. Daphna? 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 Sorry? Yeah. Okay. Is it deaf? Bring them home! Now! Bring them home! Bring them home! Bring them home! Bring them home! Let my people go! Thousands of Israelis were injured on October 7th. Hundreds of thousands more suffer as internal refugees displaced from their homes in the north and the south of Israel. Having over 240 hostages stolen into Gaza by Hamas terrorists shattered our hearts. Getting 100 back, including two in a daring rescue operation, uplifted us. News of the recovery of Al Ad Katsir of Blessed Memory's body just yesterday served as a stark reminder that with each day that passes, time is running out. Yesterday there were 134, today 133. Knowing that our brothers and sisters are still being held in dark tunnels, tortured, sexually abused, tears our souls apart. But watching our brave soldiers of Tzahal going above and beyond what we ever imagined possible to save them fills us with hope and pride. We demand Hamas, let my people go. Yeah. Let my people go. Yeah. Goldie Gamari is an international trade lawyer and since 2018 a member of the provincial parliament. Goldie is a staunch human rights advocate who opposes the radical Islamo-fascist and anti-Semitic ideology of the Islamic regime that holds Iran hostage. Goldie strives to finally have the IRGC listed in Canada as the terrorist entity it is. Welcome our true friend, Goldie. Well, good afternoon, everyone. It's an honor to be here amongst so many friends, Canadians, colleagues, and allies. Thank you for inviting me to join you here today. It is so important that we are here. It is so important that we remain united. <coughs> united in love, united in humanity, because it is our responsibility as humanity to speak up and speak out against the atrocious genocidal massacre on October 7. That is our responsibility as human beings, whether or not we are from Israel. Yeah. <laughs> I see a number of Iranians in the crowd with the lion and sun flag. <laughs> I know it seems lonely sometimes. I know it seems like you might not have allies, but you do. Let me tell you something. There is one country in the Middle East that has not 
Iranian people are fighting to overthrow the terrorist and illegitimate Islamic regime in Iran which funds, trains, and arms Hamas terrorists. After October 7, the hashtag Iranians stand with Israel was trending all over the world. That is a trend that started in Iran because you know what Iranians did? They raised the flag of Israel, which is a crime punishable by death. But Iranians did that in Iran in support of their Jewish allies because let me tell you something. Our shared history as Iranians and Jews <coughs> goes back almost 3,000 years to Cyrus the Great and 45 years of radical Islamofascist terrorism will not erase our shared history and our shared humanity. Yeah. So as you look out in the crowd, as you look out around you, remember, remember the words of a famous Iranian poem. His name was Rumi, and he says, raise your words, not your voice. It is rain that brings flowers, not thunder. Thank you for having me here today. Bring them home. I'm Yisrael Achai. Thank you. Thank you, Goldie. We love you. Oh, bring them home. Bring them home. Let my people go. Let my people go! Yeah. Last week, many of us had a chance to admire a beautiful memorial painting created by Sean Kahan, an OCAT student. The painting is of a beautiful landscape of her childhood in Near Oz, a paradise. The Kahan family, the Levinsons, and many others tried to create adjacent to Gaza. Shoam and her friends grew up there with the beautiful red flowers that grow in a breathtaking display every spring. Shoham lost many of those close friends on October 7th. The flowers will grow again, but the friends are gone. Beautiful young lives cut down by Hamas. Shoam is going to share with us. Hi everyone, my name is Shoam Khan. I'm a second year international student at OCAD University. I'm here in front of all of you today to tell my story. I grew up in Kibbutz Gvulot in the Gaza envelope, where my grandparents immigrated to and where my parents met. This beautiful piece of land will always serve as a home to me, no matter where I am. I went to school in Shar Negev, near Sderot. My entire life is within that area and my childhood. Currently, my family resides near Ashkelon, one of the most bombarded cities in Israel. On October 6th, 11.30 p.m. Toronto time, I got a text from my baby sister. Confused as to why she's awake so early on a Shabbat morning, I ask what's going on. She says there are alarms and that they were woken up by a number of them. I think, okay, they're used to it, and that it'll probably end soon enough. An hour later, I get another text from my friend from Haifa, and um, she asks, is my family okay? I tell her, of course, it's just alarm. Why won't, why won't they be okay? That's when she told me that, they, that there have been infiltrations into Israel through the Gaza border. It was, it was sheer luck that my resili that, that resilience and, whoa, sorry. <laughs> it was by sheer luck that resili and resilience that terrorists were stopped a mere 10 minute drive from our house. And while my family is okay, many of the people we know were not. I would like for all of us to take a moment of silence for friends who, are, who lost their lives six months ago and in the passing months. Nevo Arad murdered at the Nova, at the Nova Festival. Guy Edmoni murdered in his home in Kfar Aza. Oron, Yasmin, Tahir, and Tahir Bira murdered in their home in Beiri. Tova Gorin murdered in her house in Kfar Aza. Alon Shimriz and Yotam Chaim 
kidnapped into Gaza and wrongfully killed by the IDF. And Gali and Zivi Berman, who have been held hostage for six months, there isn't a day that goes by that I don't think about them. I went back home for winter break during December. It was stronger than me. I needed to go home to Israel. It was a chance to breathe again after the two months of nonstop fighting at school. Three days after I landed in Israel, Alon and Yotam's unfortunate deaths were announced. Coming home to funerals, where all of us had hoped that Alon and Yotam would come home, was one of the hardest things I had to experience. And while Alon and Yotam are sadly no longer with us, there are still 133 hostages who can be. They can come home alive and we need your help to do it. Put their faces out there and talk about them with anyone you can, because while we have been here fighting for six months, they have been fighting just to stay alive. Bring Gali and Zivi home and bring all of them home now. Bring them home. What is Hamas? Yes. What is Hamas? Yes. Let my people go? No. Let my people go? No. Now. 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 Thank you, Shoham. You paint a beautiful picture of a beautiful dream. May we and all of Israel be blessed with that future, free of attacks, free of terror. Let my people go. Now. Let my people go. Now. Next is someone who needs no introduction, our beloved champion for the Jewish people, who consistently stands for justice and truth and demonstrates her integrity at all times. Her strong voice fills us with pride. She is the MP for Thornhill and is the deputy leader of the Conservative Party of Canada. I take great pride in introducing Melissa Lanzmann. It's Melissa Lanzmann. Six months. It's been six months. Let my people go. No. 